Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Brendan and welcome back to another cryptocurrency video. And today we have some very, very important news to talk about regarding Bitcoin. And I'm not just talking about how Bitcoin is breaking out of this massive falling wedge on the daily chart, or even how it's breaking above multiple of its daily moving averages. But on top of all of this, there has been a plethora of good news coming out one after another. We have regulation that is seemingly having no effect on Bitcoin. Yes, we saw a little bit of FUD in the short term, especially around China, but this is not holding Bitcoin back at all. And again, we'll get into that in just a little bit. We also have a hamster that is beating most of the cryptocurrency traders in the world right now, which we will cover even out for trading Berkshire Hathaway. More to come on that later, but we also have the most amount of crypto ATMs that we have ever seen in North America, and this number is continuing to grow. We are seeing adoption like we haven't seen it in the world of cryptocurrency before. Of course, welcome back. My name is Brendan. If you're new to the channel, it's great to have you. We're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of this year, so if you are new here and you like what I have to say, make sure to stick around and hit that subscribe button. But let's go ahead and dive on into this. Now, I want to talk about a little bit of technical analysis first, and then we're going to get into some of these news articles. But looking at Bitcoin and where we're at right now, the Bitcoin bulls have held and we're on a four hour chart. The Bitcoin bulls have held. We have this falling channel. We have our first touch point of support, our second and then our third. Of course, we'd like to hold above that 200 EMA, which for the most part we have. We have had a couple of candle body closings in Wix that have broken us just below this, but the $40,000 support level has held for the most part. And now we are starting to see some green again. Now we have the opposite end of this. We have one, two, three touch points of resistance. And now we have this 50 EMA, which was previously support now being used as a pretty clear level of resistance along with the 100 EMA, this blue line, which was being used as support. And now this is being used as resistance right over in here. So just a couple of small little things to note on Bitcoin on this daily chart. But as we do zoom out, you can see that there is this larger falling wedge to watch on Bitcoin. And typically falling wedges are a bullish uh, formation pattern. And what these do is that we see a price squeeze in the uh, or a squeeze in the price action of Bitcoin that eventually breaks towards the upside and sends Bitcoin on a pretty nice breakout. And so for right now, this does look almost to be just confirmed because we have one, two, three touch points of resistance, and of course, one, two and three touch points of support. So this is looking pretty clean right now. Obviously, if I was going to enter anywhere on something like this, I would want to enter along the support line or at least a little bit closer to it, maybe even play the breakout. As we are looking at the MACD and the RSI, a lot of this uh, negative momentum that we had it has been already dried up. We're seeing double bullish divergence on the daily MACD of Bitcoin, and we're seeing triple bullish divergence on the daily um, RSI of Bitcoin as well. What we can see is just consistently higher swing lows on this Bitcoin chart. And as we zoom out, we can see this. This has continually, he continually held since 2019, and we're still seeing this play into effect today. So going back to the news and kind of looking at Bitcoin from a macro, I still think Bitcoin's at a discount. If we're looking at this from any kind of a price analysis, Bitcoin is down, if we wanna measure this, nearly 33% from its all time high year to date. And that is still quite the discount. Some altcoins are down significantly more than that. Some altcoins are down significantly less than that. But Bitcoin as the leader in cryptocurrency is still at a massive 33% discount, in my opinion, um, you know, with the belief that it can go back to its all time high. But going into some of this news, we have seen all sorts of just everything coming at the cryptocurrency market, all sorts of FUD coming out of China, trying to bring down the price of cryptocurrency, whether it's the traditional markets falling or it's a fear in real estate or it's a, feel in the a fear in the Chinese markets, whatever it is, even if it's regulation, we've seen it all. But what people do not understand is that most of this has already been factored in. If you're talking about China, most of those exchanges and traders have already figured a way around the system or they've moved out. These exchanges have known, these miners, they have known. This is nothing new for them. They are very aware of their situation. This is not going to affect the long-term growth of cryptocurrency. There will always be a way around it. And although they centrally ban it, 
That does not mean that people cannot access the blockchain. That is as it is decentralized and global in nature. So with this being said, that's kind of what this article essentially just goes through. Regulation does not pose any sort of existential, existential excuse me, threat to crypto um, coming out of a couple major sources. Now, this one has to be one of the most interesting ones to me, as Mr. Gox, the crypto trading hamster, is beating human investors. And this is actually true. You can actually watch him live and even try to interact with him. But the way that this works is that he is a wheel that will spin him to one of, I believe, 32 cryptocurrencies. Could be wrong on that number, but it's basically the gist of it is he is a wheel that will spin him and it will land on a cryptocurrency. And then he has a buy, t uh, a buy tube and a sell tube and whichever one he runs through will um, trigger his orders and it will actually trade for him. This has led him to outperform many cryptocurrency traders, even more professional institutions like Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, which is pretty impressive, also quite hilarious um as they are seen as a pretty big you know market maker pretty big influence and i want to find it because it actually talks about it in this article but maybe we'll have to come back to this but if you want to find a link to this this is literally all over the internet right now it is quite funny definitely recommend checking it out and, and again i believe you can even interact with him but let's go ahead and move on to our next one mr orlando bravo owns bitcoin and is very bullish institutions are just beginning to go off and he is 100 percent right this year alone in 2021 we have seen more institutional money come into the world of cryptocurrency than we have ever seen in its history um, whether that has come through play to earn games or nfts or uh, smart contracts decentralized applications businesses whatever you want to call it this is a booming industry I, I wish i had the article i was reading through stuff yesterday talking about how cryptocurrency related jobs are up almost 1500 percent they are in such a demand right now especially blockchain developers uh i mean if you know how to do this stuff you're in high demand you're gonna get paid really well everyone who has had some sort of a cryptocurrency or blockchain related skill prior to this maybe even years prior to this are most likely sitting in pretty good hands right now as the the industry continues to explode people are starting to finally realize that if you are not a part of cryptocurrency you have started to miss out on something seriously massive and even though we're at a massive discount people will continue to not buy the dip and they will continue to buy the rip so I would imagine that a lot of people that have said that they have missed this run will buy Bitcoin when it reaches its all-time high of $65,000 again, and they will not buy at $43,000 because it's simply, quote-unquote, too risky for them. Uh, U.S. should do exact opposite of what China is doing, says, uh, I might butcher this name, um, but Katie Hahn, Uh I completely agree. She goes over to kind of say that this is the United States to do the exact opposite of what China of what China is doing, take the initiative as a leader in this market and set the precedent for countries to come. Um, could not agree with her anymore. Um, this is a big opportunity for first world countries to get in here um, and kind of set the precedent and really become a market leader and a market maker. Um, in, in this big power shift that is happening. I don't even like to use the word power shift. It's not like it's some crazy revolution or anything like that, but there are so many disruptions happening in the market right now. There's a lot of wealth being transferred and a lot of money being made that just, again, anyone can capitalize on. This one I thought was really cool. The most amount of Bitcoin ATMs that have ever existed are now in place in North America. Uh, Bitcoin Depot surpasses 5,000 Bitcoin ATMs in North America alone, and this is truly cool. Not everyone can access cryptocurrency via an exchange. Maybe it's because of their identification. Um, you know, maybe they just are not a U.S. citizen. There's a bunch of reasons why people can't get onto an exchange. Maybe it's their country of origin, etc., and so forth. Bitcoin ATMs make it very easy for anyone to go and just get Bitcoin. Um, I will say that they charge pretty much the biggest fees that you will ever see in the world of cryptocurrency. You're going to be paying a lot of money to these ATMs and fees, far more than what you would pay on most of the exchanges around right now. So my preference is still to do it from an online exchange, one that 
preferably has a pretty low fee. This is still cool how they're giving people the ability that don't or that don't have the ability to do that to still own cryptocurrency. So props to them. I still think that this is a great idea. Um, as we are looking at the world of cryptocurrency and as I continue to be bullish, could Bitcoin hit below this point of $40,000? It's entirely possible. And I understand that. Again, nothing I say here is legal, financial, or tax advice in any way, but Bitcoin definitely is at a pivotal point in its timeline. It needs to break above this resistance level, and, it, and it's at a pretty scary point because if we don't and we continue to reject, we're gonna start having these moving averages that we have seen start to point downwards on Bitcoin, and that's where things could start to get scary. Granted, we're still inside of a bullish formation. We're still moving around these moving averages. There's still a ton of great news coming out. Regulation is still not too hard yet. There is not anything to be scared of yet. Now, if the 40K support starts to break again and we start seeing new uh, monthly lows, could get a little bit nervous. Uh, we are about to actually, I believe, have a new monthly candle open up here either today or tomorrow. So that should be pretty interesting as well. Looking like it's going to be a green one. Um, all Bitcoin has to do is kind of just play itself sideways here, break out of this. And the way that I'm actually looking at this now is that we have the previous floor now being used as resistance. This is one major area that Bitcoin has to break above, right? What was previously support is now being tested as resistance. And on top of that, you almost see a price squeeze happening, right? We see these higher swing lows, these lower swing highs, squeezing Bitcoin in this motion. So the theme of today's video is just, of course, Bitcoin's being squeezed everywhere. You're getting pressure from the news, you're getting pressure from the chart, you're getting pressure from the moving averages. There is pressure everywhere on Bitcoin and something big is coming. Now, personally, I believe that that big move will be to the upside. I certainly hope that we don't see a price explosion to the downside. I guess a better word to describe it would be a price implosion. Um, but I, I still think the trend is your friend here. We've had a macro uptrend of Bitcoin. Yes, we have seen some pullbacks, but it's nothing that Bitcoin hasn't seen in the past. In fact, it's seen far, far worse. We've seen Bitcoin fall 80% before on multiple occasions. And what, we're down 30%? So is this the worst that it could see? No, we've seen far worse in the past and Bitcoin has continued to recover. And that's why I will remain bullish on Bitcoin. So. Hopefully you all did enjoy this video. If you did, share it with a friend, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications and leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I'm interested to think or to hear what all of you have to think, uh, especially about this news going on. There is so much news to talk about and if there's something that I missed, make sure to let me know because I would love to cover it in the next video. But, but once again, everyone, thank you all for watching and I will see you all very, very soon.